Uh, you dismissed the idea that Russia would ever try to conquer Ukraine, arguing Putin is much too smart for that. Then, in the lead up to the 2022 invasion, you argued, and I quote you word for word, what the Russians are going to do is crush the Ukrainians. They're going to bring out the big guns, they're going to turn places like Kiev and other cities in Ukraine like into rubble. It will be like Fallujah, Mosul, Grozny. You argued Western intervention would be pointless because Russia would level Ukraine and go nuclear against the West. Then in, an then in an interview with Chinese Communist Party controlled media outlet CGTN on February 23rd this year, you said, and again, quoting word for word, conventional wisdom in the West has long been that Vladimir Putin was an imperialist and he was determined to conquer Ukraine and make it part of greater Russia. There is no evidence to support that, your words. So first we were told by you that Russia and Putin will never try to conquer Ukraine. Then you tell us that Russia will crush the Ukrainians. Then, when Russia invades but fails to take Kyiv, you argue there is no evidence that Russia ever wanted to conquer Ukraine. And in, indeed, you said that in your speech tonight. You claim that there is no evidence for that. You claim there's no evidence for the fact that Putin is an imperialist, which completely beggars belief. One, Putin claims Ukraine is not a country and has never existed as a country. He openly compares himself to Peter the Great while musing on territorial conquest. Here's his quote, what was Peter doing taking back and reinforcing? That's what he did, and what and it looks like it fell on us to take back and reinforce as well. Drew, the question. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, no, I, I understand what the question is. I mean, I, I could go on forever. Okay. But, he, he, you know, just succinctly, yeah. please, your question. Okay, so you've been wrong over and over and over again about Ukraine, blatantly wrong. You hang out with Viktor Orban. You quote crazy, sleazy Russian military bloggers named Big Surge in okay. your writings. You've claimed... The question... Right, and this is the question, this is the question. You this burn, is, a, this is not a question. It's an, no, this is, your, this an, is your question, though. But it's an have indi you burned it's your credibility? It's an indictment. Why? No, but... Continue but, with the indictment. This is, this is the question. This Continue question. with the indictment. Why, why should we listen to you when it comes to Ukraine, when you've been wrong over and over and over? Okay. Jo okay. John Mishana. Well, I'm correct. Order, order, order. Drew, I'm correct you had as say, proven mate. by history. You had to say John Mishana. My argument was that Putin would not try to conquer Ukraine. That means conquering all of the country and making it part of a greater Russia, right? This is the argument that Putin is an imperialist. He's interested in conquering Ukraine, making it part of Russia. And then he's, when he's done with Ukraine, he's gonna conquer other countries. He has not come close to trying to conquer all of Ukraine. When he invaded Ukraine in 2022, they sent 190,000 troops in it the most. There is absolutely no way that 190,000 troops could conquer Ukraine. When the Germans went into Poland in 1939, and remember the Germans were only trying to conquer the western half of Poland because the Soviets were going to conquer the eastern half of Poland. The Soviets went in, excuse me, the Germans went in, the Wehrmacht went in, with 1.5 million troops. 1.5 million troops. Ukraine is a huge piece of real estate, much bigger than Poland, certainly far bigger than Western Poland. And if Putin were interested in conquering all of Ukraine, he would need at least 2 million. I would argue he would need 3 million troops. He did not have those kind of force levels. He did not try to conquer Kyiv. The reason he invaded Ukraine was he wanted to force Zelensky to the bargaining table so they could get some sort of agreement on Ukrainian neutrality, Ukraine not being in NATO. And in fact, as many as you remember, in March, the war starts, remember, February 24th, by early March, the Russians and the Ukrainians are negotiating in Istanbul about a peace deal that will end the war. And of course, it all revolves around the subject of NATO expansion. Putin was willing to cut a deal. The evidence is overwhelming. For those of you who have any doubts about this, you can Google an interview that Naftali Bennett, the Israeli prime minister who was deeply involved in these negotiations, can tell you about what Russian thinking was, what Russian capabilities were, and so forth and so on. So he did not try to conquer all of Ukraine. You use the phrase, or I use the phrase, that 
he was going to crush Ukraine. I said to you in my talk tonight, and I've said on countless occasions, that he said that he would wreck Ukraine. And he is wrecking Ukraine. He's turning it into a dysfunctional rump state. This is the rhetoric I use all the time. He is now going to conquer uh, and annex a number of oblasts. But he was not interested in doing that before the war. What he wanted to do was cut a deal that created a neutral Ukraine. So I don't think that I've been proved wrong on this one.